one day we in the meme room. So I don't know, I think Tyron, this was back when Tyron and um this was Tyron, uh L T and uh uh Alvin. Al was there. Yeah. I don't know what Tyron did. He pissed Cole Burns off. Yeah. Cole Burns was like, get get out, get get the hell out my room. <laughs> Cole Burn walked up on the man there, dang. No. <laughs> the man told Cole Burn, man, you better sit your old ass down. <laughs> I need for you to be tripping cool, man. For everything. No, Cole Burn tried to hit. He tried to fight. Man, Cole Burn ready to fight. You ready to fight? The <laughs> man Tyron told him, man, man, you better sit your old ass down, man. <laughs> Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Rodney Cooper. I'm the host of Locker Room Talk with Coop. I got another great guest that's coming in for you guys. I got my guy, my brother, Justin Fowler. Coming out of high school, he was the number two fullback in the country by Scout.com, a 5A state champion. And also, he was an All-American by Super Prep. And then he went on to play for the University of Alabama from 2011 to 2015. And during that time, he was a two-time SEC champion and a two-time national champion as well. And after his senior year, he entered his name into the draft and got picked up in the fourth round by the Tennessee Titans. And me and Justin, man, we had a great conversation. We talked about his story. We talked about advice to the youth. He gave some funny Nick Saban stories that you guys are definitely going to laugh at. And also, we talked about what trusting the process means to him. And he also gave some funny stories with his teammates as well. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And guys, make sure that you guys like, comment, share this video with somebody you think will enjoy it. And also, hit those red letters that say subscribe for your boy if you're enjoying the show. And I hope you guys enjoy the show. So check it out. On the train. So we got my bro, Justin Fowler, on the show. What's up, bro? Welcome to the show. Man, what's up, big homie? How you been? I've been good, man. I've been good. How you? I'm good, man. I can't complain. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So for the people out there, I'm pretty sure everybody, you know, knows this, but, uh, you know, your nickname is Nudie. So uh, where did that nickname come from? Because I know, you know, especially come from the crib, you know, we get all type of nicknames, you know, you know, back from your hometown. But where did, where did Nudie come from? Man... The story is that my dad gave me is we was in a hospital and okay. he just kept walking around the hospital saying, "Man, this my nudie baby, it's okay. my nudie baby." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess I guess growing up in the um, in Orange Grove, everybody got a hold of the nickname Nudie. Yeah, and that's what everybody been calling me ever since, bro. That's all I know. Nudie. <laughs> right, right. I know yeah, in school, you know? That, in school, that's what I would call you. I ain't call you Joss. I'll call you Nudie. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, but yeah, he ain't he, even Coach Saban called me Nudie, bro. So, oh, for real? <laughs> well, everybody who know me called me Nudie. So yeah, he knows. Yeah. <laughs> that's dope. That's that dope. My way, that's my real name, the Nudie Fowler. Fowler, right? Fake, <laughs> fake. But but let's jump right into it, man. So let the people know your story, you know, being a kid from Mobile, Alabama, playing high school ball at Viga High School, up until the point you decided to play for the University of Alabama. Oh, man, it, it was a crazy ride, man. You know, growing up in Orange Grove. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, I was just talking about this story uh, not too long ago. I was, like, one of the best players down here in Mobile, but yeah. I always went to, to my neighborhood team, which was Orange Grove. We always ended up doing terrible, you know. Right. So I, right. I, go from, I go from the best team to the worst team and get my head beat in, win one game while the other team go into the championship win yeah. all, <laughs> winning it all, you know. But it's just a thing, just wanting to be with your boys and Boy, play with, with your folks. boys. And, right. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> Thanks. That, that what happened then. Got to high school, man, been a knucklehead. Yeah. Messing around the field, fell to seventh grade and just trying to be the cool guy. Didn't really play any middle school ball, had to stick to Park League. Mm. Then um I met this um on the way when in middle school I met the principal. Um she was hard nosed man, named yeah. DH Robertson. I don't know, I think she done got married now. I don't know yeah. what she go by now, but when I say this lady was strict, man, yeah. she was strict and Sometimes we need that though. Sometimes we need yeah, that. You're right. You're right. Yeah. She, I, got, I said she kind of one of the people who put me on like a straight and narrow. You feel me? Mm, yeah. Because she wanted, she wanted those type of you smack your lip, you're going to detention. 
Straight up. Right. Smack yeah. your lip again in her face. She gonna, she'll suspend you. So yeah. it wasn't no point. Like you like, man, I'm in a lose-lose situation. If, right. you, if you do the wrong thing in front of her, she gonna suspend you, you know? And bro, so, and, and bro, it's crazy because it, it's not like that now how it was back then as far as like, you know, principal teachers getting on to you because, you know, the parents want to, you know, you know, I always get a kid's benefit of the doubt. But my mom said, hey, if my son ever acting up, straighten him out right then. You feel me? So, <laughs> yeah. Then I had, I had my granddad, man. My granddad told me he ever had to come back to the school. It was going to be some problems. Problem, man. right. Fact, you know fact. 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 I respect my granddaddy, so. Yeah, I was like, man, I don't. I, I, I remember him whooping me one time, and that was the worst. Never the again. Worst I ever got. Right. Yeah. He told me. He told me not to do something. When I did it again. Yeah. And all, all I remember was my brother who all passed away, just janking me. Ah, oh, you got a whooping. You got a whooping. <laughs> <laughs> but but talk about you know like you know a high school you know making that from high school to college as far as that transition because you know you had like a lot of offers and stuff like that so what was that transition like like you were saying you know uh fell in seventh grade having to play park league and things like that so talk about that oh yeah i met uh karen stevenson um my going into my eighth grade with my eight end of my eighth grade year he was just one of those guys who was straightforward with me yeah. He's just like, man, we're going to get you out here in three and a half years because I was already behind the eight ball. Right. And he was just like, man, you just got to do everything you got to do. Um, Make A's and B's. You can't make no C's. Mm. Like, you got to you gotta, gotta be ahead of the game. You can't come in here and bull jump. Right. So when I started playing ball, I mean, everybody everybody liked me. Yeah. In my 11th grade year, I made I made a hip, hick of a play against Wilson. Then we end up like rolling through the season. Then yeah. make make it so crazy. I had got my offer from Alabama. They were like the first school to offer me. For real? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna start rolling in after that. After you got that Bama <laughs> off. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say, um, well, I was we was at the um the uh, All Star game practice. Okay. And Coach Saban ended up calling Coach Stevenson. Yeah. And he was like. Well, we're going to give you a scholarship. You know, you can't talk to anybody else. Uh, we just going to offer you and let you come up here and play for us. Then next thing you know, you got LSU, you got Florida State. That's how it works. You work. got Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, man. So, to tell the truth, I almost end up going to Florida State because Jimbo tried to sell me on, like, being the number one back. And I'm like, man. <laughs> he like, you want to go? You want to go to Bama and sit on the bench or you want to come to Florida State and start? Yeah. I'm like, man, I don't want to go and ride no Benz. Yeah. You got a whole bunch of got a whole bunch of horses back there. At Belmont, I, hey, hey, so hey, Bo Scarborough said the same thing, man. He said he was in the stable in Greg and ready. <laughs> what, what, yeah. he said, that's all you can do. At yeah. So I had sat down with my mom before uh, I made my decision. You no, know, I was gonna I was gonna go down to Florida State and look look around. Right. But my mom was like, nah, I just want you to go to Alabama and. Mm. What what mama say it goes at that point in time. That's a fact. That's so a fact. That, that that that's how I ended up at Bama, man. Dope, dope. So, bro, I was doing research on you now, bro. So I seen you ran track and you hoop too. Now, bro, what position did you play in basketball <laughs> at? And what type of numbers you was putting up? Because I seen you when you was at Bama, bro. You always been swole. So I just couldn't yeah. see you hooping, bro. <laughs> so so what position you play when you was hooping, bro? Cause you too slow, yeah. bro. You too slow, they had, man. They had me playing like small forward and power forward. All right, yeah, okay, yeah. Boring so you, you were, you were hurting <laughs> folks out there. So that was you was doing. <laughs> I was hurting them. I was hurting. Them. Yeah. But, uh, the thing is, I was a lot smaller back then, and I could, I could jump like, jump out the, like, really jump out the gym. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I got, to see, I got to see some film. <laughs> I got to see some film. You jumping out the gym. What was your vert? I don't know my vert. Back then, I had a hell of a bird. I ain't yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember playing my freshman year, and everybody thought I wasn't going to dunk. And this guy trying to chase me down the block, and I dunked on him. Freshman year? Bye. Bye. Yeah, freshman year. Yeah. Man, that's yeah. crazy. I got I got yeah. to see that. Because I know yeah. you got you got long wingspan. You got long wingspan, but yeah, yeah, but. I was like, bro, he too slow. I could not see Buddy going up and down the court, bro. <laughs> Real, man. I was out there more dunking, man. Yeah. Like I said, he, was, he, found, he found me. Um, 
I was actually playing basketball, and one of the guys that from Viagra, he was like the starting linebacker. He was like, man, we got this dude out here. He got down on six foot. He out here just dunking on everybody. We got his <laughs> coach. Like, he for real. Yeah. You got film on that? Do you guys have film on that? I know, fam. You can go. You just ask around, though. I just ask around. <laughs> I got you. I got you. So, who was the person that you know put the football in your hands, or was it just the sport itself that you uh, gravitated to? Man, it's just a sport that I gra- gravitated to. Man, I, I yeah. love playing. Football. Like, like I said, in Orange Road, man. Yeah. It was never a moment. Like we, that's all we did was go outside. Like, like in today's society, we got a lot of people playing video video games. games facts <laughs> inside. When I- we would pick like seven a seven man team and play basically mm-hmm. playing seven seven more seven, but sometimes we'll go we'll do tackling. And no pads, like, no nothing, just out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bust them. Bust them up, bust them up. Facts. One of yeah. My favorite game. Like we used to, we used to make a rule where you can score like a certain amount of touchdown before you can go home, or we stop the game. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah we just did it like seasonal. Like if we football season then we played football. Basketball season when we played basketball outside. Mm. Baseball we played we we played some some type of baseball, but we used the tennis tennis ball. Yeah, basically like a little a game called we used to call it pop up and stuff like that. Yeah, but if they we used to use the tennis ball. So if if we came down to it, we run to the base and the tennis ball hit you. Yeah, you you out. So basically, they they can hit you as hard as they want to. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, straight up, straight up. So, uh, you know, as kids, you know, growing up, we always, like you like you saying, the principal for you, we always had like a teacher, auntie, moms, pops, you know, uncle, you know, granddad for you. And then, you you know, I also had people, you know, in the street that was speaking, you, should, you know, speaking that belief until, you know, tell us to keep going, keep pushing. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, you know, just keep going. So who was that person or group of people that spoke that belief into you growing up to be great? Oh, my mom, my, mom, my brothers, um. Uh... Well, my, my oldest brother who passed away, he always believed in me, you know. I mm. remember uh, playing in high school. He just going to school, talking junk to all the uh, football players. Yeah, my little yeah. brother finna kill y'all. My little <laughs> brother finna kill y'all. Man, my little brother going to do right. everything he can. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. going to brag. <laughs> right. And I had all, all my partners, man, like my all, everybody dang there who I grew up with, they was behind me 100%. Mm. Like, yeah. hey, you, you, you for real, bro. You, you can do it, bro. Like. I had people to push me. I had Orange Road and Happy, like a hood called Happy Hill. I'm from Orange Road. Yeah. When I be going to Viagra, I used to be in Happy Hill a lot. They were like, man, boy, you for real. Like, man. Nah, they used to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll tell you, it always be like that from the home time because I know we had played against Central uh, Phoenix City, so that was our rivalry yeah. school. So we was down by one. So I hit a game winning three at the buzzer. So I wasn't thinking. I ran the Central side. So the whole yeah. my whole crib ran over to that side like we all jumping up like at halftime folks had got the fight and everything it was it was crazy but they <laughs> bro after the game bro they was ready to hit and everything bro I like these dudes like crazy but they was rocking with me though that's how it is though yeah that's the thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I mean my junior year we were playing we were playing Wilson High School and mm. I think we was up and I'm I, they they had me playing fullback and linebacker yeah and some and some running back so I motioned out the backfield. Yeah, it was like on a two point conversion. Yeah, then you know I go up in the I go up in the um yeah I'll grab it with one hand and come down with it. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, man, it's on it's on now nah, that's on YouTube. That's actually on YouTube. <laughs> All right, bet. we go we go pull it we go pull it up and put it on here. We go pull it up put it on here. I don't put, put it up. It's the okay. first play of uh the beast Jonathan Fowler on YouTube. Okay, Went I up got there and it with one hand and people still talk about that today, man. And like, hey, you know, in this day and time, especially the youngest man, you know they they say it ain't verified, it ain't on film. So you know how they is. <laughs> on film, you gonna pull it up? All right, that's for sure. We gonna do that. So so for the young people that's gonna be you know watching or listening to this, what advice would you give them uh, if they want to play college ball on how to position themselves to be seen by these college coaches? Oh man, um, go to as many camps as you can, and when mm. you're on that field, give y'all man, like ball ball to the wall. Facts. I mean, leave everything on the field that you can, man. Like, mm-hmm. leave it on the field. Facts. If they have to come pick you up after the game and carry you off that mud, they put you all into it. That, that's, that's all I got to say. And the coaches go see that, and they go respect that, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. if you're a big name, if you're leaving it all on the field and being the leader, mm-hmm. they love that, man. 
facts. I know Brian Vogler, he was talking about on one of the episodes. He was saying that. He said the same thing. Go to all these camps. And if you can ball, the coaches go find you. If you can ball. Oh, so, yeah, yeah he said it's he said always. the same thing. Definitely go to the different camps. So, so with everything you accomplished, you know, in high school, before you got to Bama, you know, being number two fullback in the country by scout.com, being a 5A state champion, being an All-American by Super Prep, and much more, what was the biggest challenge for you making that transition from high school to college? Man, leaving home, man. I was a homebody. <laughs> home man. Yeah. man, I Thanks. literally like when I had to leave, I ain't know nothing but mobile, you know? Thanks. So when I leave for college, I'm like, man, I gotta leave mobile, man. Like the whole time, the whole ride, my mom you know, and my stepdad, they wanna drop me off. Yeah. Man, I'm in the back seat sad like mud. Like, man, what I'm gonna do? I don't know, I don't know nobody up here. But yeah. I knew B Day and I knew like Julio and Mark Barron and all them. Right. Yeah, I'm just like, man, these ain't my people though. You know, yeah, facts. They, yeah. I know them, but they ain't my they ain't my people. And I could attest to this. You, 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 hey, you made sure your people came up to Bama. I see plenty of mobile oh, yeah. dudes <laughs> <laughs> going through our bride. I'm like, man, who, the, who all these dudes here, bro? Hey, all up yeah. on Bill. I said, hey, man, they, I they took, keep them with them. I had to take them with me, man. I had but, to take them with me. That's the only way we're going to be comfortable. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So the biggest thing for you from make, from going from high school to college pretty much being a homebody and making that yeah, adjustment. Yeah, just leaving Mobile. Just leaving Mobile, man. Once I got accustomed to Tuscaloosa, man, it was good. Yeah, yeah. Got you, got you. So so talk about the point system that I got that I go by, man, because people think, you know, oh we, you know, D one athletes. yeah, they think we D one athletes, we at Bama, and you know, they think it's sweet. We play football, we hoop, they think it's sweet. So Explain to the people what exactly the point system is and and what y'all what y'all mean by that. Man, the point system is, man, they, they took it to where if you miss up to four classes, man, basically <laughs> you, you <laughs> So you don't you don't go to class, you skip. Mm. And that's one point. You miss another class, uh study hall, that's another point. Right. You miss uh you miss basically if you miss anything, it's a point. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then the thing is, too, it'd be tough, bro, after a long day of practice school, man. Then you got early morning workouts, and at the end of the day, you got study hall, bro. It'd be rough, bro. And then especially, man, like, soon you, you got to practice, you go to Brian and get something to eat. You four or nine, so you, yeah, you try you to go to the study hall. Yeah, <laughs> but if you hit them point, if you hit them four points, what happened? Uh, you got to go on uh, 6 a.m. workouts. Uh, you got to go to early morning study hall, man. It just it get rough for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, really, you really ain't getting no sleep now. Nah. Right. You got to be right. early, up, early in the morning. Then after practice, sometimes you have to do extra work, running and rolling around on the ground. And like they, mm -hmm. it's, a punishment. it's punishment for missing class. Yeah. So it make you, it make you not want to miss class. Facts. So I want I wanted to give the people the perspective, man, because they be thinking like, you know, just because we athletes, you know what I mean, that we, you know, not really in the classroom and stuff like that. But now nah, we had academic advisors, we had Lance, uh, Molly, all of them like at them classroom oh, making yeah, sure yeah. we in there. <laughs> or or oh, yeah, if not, we getting that call. Take, we getting that call. They gonna take every day. They gonna oh, take yeah. every day. For sure. So, so I just want I just wanted to get a young people too and the people are gonna be listening, watching it like a perspective of that because <laughs> man, our day started at six in the morning to like ten at night, and then we got in at ten at night. We gotta do it all over again. So I mean, you ain't lying. You are not lying. I'm gonna say, man, they, if you got a project or something or some homework, oh, they gonna make man. you stay there until you finish. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> especially man. when you go on the road, you gotta make sure you get all your work done before you get on the road, or you gonna be doing oh, it while yeah. you on the road. So it's rough. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was rough. It got rough sometimes. He'd be like, man, forget this, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to buck the system, but <laughs> if you buck the system, you know what's going to happen behind that. <laughs> Fair. 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 <laughs> so I, so on all the episodes, man, I heard the stories of like four quarters, the one tens, hearing a different perspective from Bo Scott, bro, Dunny Lee Jr., uh, Brian Vogler, Ronnie Clark, Christian Jones, and all them guys. So give me a story on what you can remember off the top of your head that you can share with the people on how rough four quarters is. For a quarter? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, man, that's the worst thing ever, man. Like, mm. running for a whole hour and doing drills <laughs> with, with, with about a five-minute break? Man, it's pure, pure <laughs> D hell, man. Straight up. Y'all used to be, hey. You be like, what the hell is this? You be like, what the hell is this? <laughs> hey, are your recruit bit, they smile and everything. When they get you there, <laughs> it's over man, with. It's a different, man. 
Yeah. Ooh, some of them work out. Them that four quarter ain't no joke, boy. I used yeah. to be so mad, man. Look, we'll be running, we'll be running like the one tens in four quarter. Yeah. You know, yeah. some some people they be like they got a little heart condition. <laughs> yeah, uh, twenty Jerry, twenty Jerry Williams. He, yeah. He with that, my chest hurt. That's I, right. like, mom, <laughs> I said this mama here. Yeah. You need to get out of get out of it, man. Bro, I ain't gonna say my god name, bro, but one of my guys, dog, we was doing the mile test. So I had to run my mile at 528. <laughs> so look, one of my guys, bro, he he came around the last curve. He knew he wasn't gonna make it. So he just fell in coat on. He said, Coach, you gotta remember I got asthma, coach. I got asthma. <laughs> he got his inhaling and everything, bro. I said, nah, nah, oh, bro. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to tell you, when, that, that's how you know four quarter run, boy. They faking to get out of it. He said, "Coat my heart, my chest, my chest, <laughs> my chest." He'll, he'll go to hitting on his chest, man. Coat my chest. <laughs> I'm like, man, that man faking. Then that thing, you know, we leave, we get out of four quarter, boy. I got him today. <laughs> 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 Hey, I've been chopping up with Jerry, so I'm going to ask about that when I get him on here. I'm going to ask him about that. You got to. <laughs> yeah. I got, I'm going to ask him about that. So, man, so what was it like, man, going from high school, you know, playing at Viagra High School to, to playing at Brian Diddy Stadium in front of 100,000 people going crazy? What was that like, bro? Man, it was wild, man. You know, yeah. um, we, had a good, we had a good little fan base at Viagra, especially if you're winning. Right, fact. Uh, you, if you lose it, they're gonna, they gonna MF you and call you everything in the book. Right. It's rough out there. It's rough out there in Pritchard, man. Yeah. But Tuscaloosa, man, you got a hundred thousand. You can, like, if you go from a little noise to a lot of noise, baby, right, you fact. can't hear anything. And Brian Denny wants the crowd really into the game. Yeah. Um, it get crazy out there. Oh, I bet. I bet. I can all imagine, especially when it gets to the point it gets so loud, man, you can't hear yourself think, man. You just, yeah. you just going, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And them big games, them big games, bro. LSU and uh, Auburn. I'm to say that, yeah. Man, you can't hear nothing. I remember, I think we were playing Auburn, what that was. I think that was my last year. Man, I'm in the ground shaking, man. I'm like, God dang, like, for real? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, for real? I say, they just, I say they just be watching on TV from the stands, and they be seeing the camera shake when it gets so loud. Yeah. I'm like, bro, we can feel that. Like I say, it felt like the oh, court yeah. was shaking a few games, man, especially in Kentucky, all them games, man, Arkansas. Man, 40 minutes of hell, like, it get live, bro. It get live yeah, quick. It, it, get, it get live, man. You'll feel it. Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> Facts. Facts. <laughs> so, uh, so with Trust the Process, you know, all the guys in the head on here, at some point, uh, they talked about it. And I think it's dope because, you know, it's a part of it's a part of the process that is, is instilled in you guys and you guys having a different perspective on it. And not only can you apply that on the field, you can apply that in life, too. So. So you've been a part of you. You've been a part of it. And you was a big part of it. You know, trust the process. So, what does trust the process mean to you when you know all you guys talk about it? Man, I'm gonna say it's just like I know everybody wants to be the man, Fact. but like you say, it's a process, man. It's something that you gotta go through. I mean, mm. sometimes it means that you you're not developing right or something. Mm. Some something's not going right. And once you develop, it's your time to shine. Like Facts. they gonna put you in there when the right when it's the right moment. Mm. And if you just wait till I feel like everybody got a turn. Facts. And if you you strong enough and to wait and not, you know what I'm saying, get into that transfer port, portal, because mm -hmm. you might go somewhere else and get put in another type of process, you know. Facts. Like the you you go to another school and they feel like you ain't ready. You still now you still playing the waiting game where you could have been mm. where you started at and waiting right. and it could have been soon. It could have been your turn because right. most of the time, man, like Bama and stuff like that, if somebody get hurt, it's the next man up. Next man up, facts. So you got to you got to uh, trust. Like that's what they say. The the process. Mm. Cause I, I was trust. talking. I was talking about with running man on the episode I did with him. I said, you know, it's dope seeing how Saban do it year in and year out. Cause you guys coming in four star, five star, like y'all have you know all the accolades and stuff like that. And I said, you know, when you get when you get to Bama, you got it. A, a NFL player or two NFL players in front of you. So sometimes you got to sit down and you got to wait your turn and you got to be ready for that opportunity. And I said, that could be tough for a five-star, four-star guy. And especially with you, you know, being number two fullback in the country by scout.com, just like like you were saying, Florida State, they were saying, man, you come right in and play. And you know, Bama, right. you know, Nick Saban, he going to shoot you straight. He going to say, if you're good enough, you go, you go get on the field. But if not, you got to work, you got work like hell to get on that field. Because I mean, yeah. I, I can just only imagine how practice is, you know, Every day you playing against an NFL player every day. And I can all imagine like that. Yeah. 
I'm gonna say playing like playing at Alabama, it made practice like the game. It made the game so much easier, bro. Yeah. Like, we going against like you said, going against four or five star guys, bro. Like yeah. they they better than some of the guys you're gonna play against. Thanks. So when you you going through practice and you y'all killing each other, going back and forth, cause you going. <laughs> One thing about save you gonna be in pads, right? <laughs> you gonna be in pads. You gonna be in pads from. And then that hey, hey, then that, then that heat don't make it no better. That Alabama heat don't yeah, make it no yeah, better yeah. though. Y'all finna say when it get up to like one oh eight and all that. <laughs> when you doing in camp in August, he gonna get the most out of you, and you going yeah. against the best. So most of the time, they just made the game that much easy. Like mm. going against those guys. Yeah. Yeah, dope, dope. So, so during your time at Bama, bro, what did you learn from Saban? Because, like I said on all the different episodes, the thing just looking from afar, the thing I you know admire about him is his attention to detail and the standard he not only holds you guys to, but himself as well. So, what's some what's some lesson that you learned from Saban that you apply now in life? Man, just be accountable, man, and mm. be on time. Like, Flex. I Flex. one Flex. thing about Point that. <laughs> I hate I hate being late, bro. Like, Thanks. you know, trying to do something, and I'm trying to be there on time. Like, mm-hmm. you gotta meet, like, a meeting or something, and I gotta be there a certain amount of time trying to leave the house. And right, sometimes you know you got to fight with the kids and I'm trying to get out the door. Facts. You be like, man, dang, I'm finna be late, and my mm-hmm. whole mood just changed. I get I get Facts. teed off. You know? Right, right. So then just being accountable, man. Like, if you want me to do something, and you need me to do it. I'm gonna do it. Like. If you are, if you my boss, man, and you telling me to do something, mm-hmm. and I just got that from Coach Aim, like it, it must need to be done. It ain't no point of me arguing with you or doing anything like that. Just be accountable and do your job. Facts. And being on time is definitely something that a lot of people don't really pay attention to. Because you know what they say, trust is hard to gain and easy to lose. So if, if you always late to something, you know, people ain't, people go see that. And they might not tell you, but they could be like, "Man, I can't trust. I can't. I can't rely on that guy. If I need him to be somewhere, or if I need him to come, you know, speak to these kids, or I need him to, you know, do some business wise or business related or something like that, they can't trust you because the way you do anything, the way you do everything. So I mean, you gotta be, you gotta be accountable, like you were saying. You gotta have people around you to hold you accountable. You gotta be on time and stuff because that that goes a long way. Just that simple fact of being on time and not getting there as soon as it. As soon as the time hit, be a couple minutes early. So, early, you know, yeah. just like you were saying, because you never know what might happen with traffic and all that and stuff like that. So, you never right, know. Right. But, uh, but, but what's a funny story, a funny saving story that you can share with the people? Because, man, I'd have heard it all as far as with, you know, Bo Scarborough, man, that man is so crazy, bro. Bo was talking about how, you know, saving always talk about you can't let the other team piss on your grass. Uh, Chris and John were talking about, you know, one year you guys won the national championship and y'all had a meme. And a meeting after the championship, and Saban had got pissed off. And Saban was like, "This is not last year's championship team. It wasn't even forty eight hours, <laughs> forty eight hours later." <laughs> but uh, what's a funny Saban story that you can share with the people? Oh man, uh, it don't got to be PG Joe. either, because Bo going crazy. It ain't got to be PG. <laughs> <coughs> I got, I got, like, I got a couple stories, man. Okay, you know? okay, let's hear. Them. Let's hear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one day, me and me and TJ at practice just playing around, you know. TJ yelled it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah. For a while, man, you like, hey man, there go your dad. I like, that ain't my fucking dad. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. now you know, it's the, end, it's the end of practice, right? Yeah. So I was, I'm looking at him crazy. I'm, I'm doing it on purpose. Yeah. You know I'm doing it on purpose. And he's looking at me, I'm looking at him, right? Yeah. So he goes off on me. Nudie, you can stop looking at me like that. And I'm like, man, you got me effed up, man. Yeah. <laughs> just snapping on each other back and forth. Yeah. I walked home, called my mom. I quit. I, ain't <laughs> I quit. I quit. <laughs> so next thing you know, my coach, my coach, coach Steve, and by that time, he had made up that Alabama. He called me like, man, Coach Saban want to talk to you. Yeah. He wasn't want to apologize. You know what I'm saying? We both, <laughs> I went in his office the next day. We both apologized to each other. He was just like, well, Nudie, you know you hurt my feeling when you call me old man Saban. I, I, I used to be at practice calling my old man Saban. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, man, it, it was just, you know what I'm saying, just a heated moment then. Mm. Me and Jones used to play around all the time. Like he was okay. Ray Charles, and I, and Christian I Jones. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, around. I seen the clip, bro. That's hilarious, dog. Like, I was crazy. 
So one day we walk in there, I think we call saving birthday. He yeah. Was, <laughs> he was saying happy birthday and all that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Bo, hey, Bo had said, man, it was one practice. He said he came in. He said the practice was like physical and stuff like that or whatever. He said, man, he said, coach, they hold and coach, they hold him. And then uh, Coach Saban said, hey, Bo. And Bo said, what's up, Coach? He said, hold this. And grab his stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, used to, he used to love saying to my, man, my, pre- my pepper don't work anymore. <laughs> yeah, he, he, oh, man. So uh, so give the people, what's what's the most memorable moment uh, on the field at Bama that you can share with the people, like giving them a behind the scenes, like play by play? Oh man, um, the Texas A&M win when the year that Johnny came in and beat us, the year after that, mm. uh, we was like, like the end of the game, and I think it was it was tied up, and that's when they 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 started developing what they call the nudie play, like on the goal line they throw them the yeah, goal yeah. line touchdown. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had slipped out the back, AJ hit me, and I scored the touchdown. Yeah. And that that one of my most memorable moments, man. Like mm. putting that putting the icing on the cake to win the facts. game. Yeah. And it's crazy, bro, cause every time I was like, every time they gave you the ball, dog, you was you would get like eight to ten yards every time. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, Nudy got some speed on him. I, I said I ain't no dude oh, can yeah. move like that. Yeah. Man, I play ball now. I, I might I might look slow. <laughs> don't let that, don't let now you just now you just look strong. That's all that is. <laughs> I ain't know you can move. Way, I, yeah, facts. Yeah, facts. So, uh, so now, bro, without getting nobody in trouble, now you know we all grown, now huh? you know we all grown. But what's right. a funny story or a couple of stories, you know, with your teammates? Because I talk about, you know, uh, the 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 funniest memories, man, is in the locker rooms, man, in the dorms, in the apartments, and stuff like that. So, so what's a story or a couple of stories that you can share with the people? Now, it don't have to be PG, but you know, don't get your bros I'm in trouble, say. now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say, you know, when the, the coffin channel came out, you know, yeah, me and Ruf, me and Ruben were messing over everybody, man. <laughs> Ruben Foster, so everybody used to be in a cold tub. Yeah, me and me and Ruben going up, put him in the coffin. <laughs> 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 too bad especially in like a uh a, a high pressure environment you gotta have some fun with you gotta enjoy it man oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah for sure so yeah, I mean, one, I was, go ahead I go ahead one time we was in the um film room and d d hart had the remote to the projector <laughs> so yeah so william trying to have a meeting yeah every time you start having to meet them up d hart is trying to got the camera out <laughs> <laughs> Like, man, you need to stop doing it. Whoever got this, whoever got the goddamn remote, they need yeah. to give it to me. Everybody just looking at each other real crazy. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> turn it back on. D Hard to hit it again. Man, all right. All right. You MF don't want to learn shit today. <laughs> <laughs> all right, keep keep fucking with me. You know, yeah. keep, keep fucking with me. Come on, all right. All right. I just tell Coach Saban, y'all ain't learned shit today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah straight up. <laughs> that man kept hitting it. So was man, he try- was he trying to find a remote before um before the me? <laughs> oh, he just went ahead and just started. Yeah, he started. You know, when you first come in the me room, everything had be on. Oh uh, yeah. So you know, you <laughs> no, just so straight to Man, that man D R had remote just hitting it. Yeah. And one day, one day, <clears throat> one day we in the me room. So, I don't know, I think Tyron, this was back when Tyron and, um, this was Tyron, uh, Al T, and, uh, uh, Al, Al was there. Yeah. I don't know what Tyron did. He pissed Cole Burns off. Yeah. Cole Burns was like, get, get out, get, get the hell out my room. <laughs> Cole Burns walked up on the man and everything. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, Cole Burn tried to hit. He tried to fight. Cole Burn ready to fight. He ready to fight. <laughs> <laughs> man, told him, man, man, you better sit your old lad down, man. <laughs> oh man. So bro, so 
So with you being a you know a two time SEC champ, two time national champion, you know doing it at the highest level and playing in the NFL, making a big impact in the league. Uh, for the college guys that's gonna be watching or listening to this, uh, what advice would you give to them making that transition from playing college ball to the NFL? Because you know it's a business too, so you know. Talk about that. I just tell them, I tell them, stay on top of everything, man. Don't mm. get complacent. Don't be just happy to be there. Uh, watch film. Um, get get with the older guy, vet. You know what Facts. I'm saying? Talk to him. Figure out everything. Mm. Man, just do what you need to do. Like whatever they tell you, you need to improve on. You just try to improve on it. Um, mm. and just 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 work your butt off. Facts. And the thing I always say that they got me out of there. I wasn't listening. I wasn't focused. They, I wasn't mm. eating right. I wasn't watching a lot of film. Yeah. So don't do what I did. Do the opposite. Right, right, Watch right. Watch film. Eat right. Eat healthy. Like do what you need to do to stay in. Because mm. it's a business. Because they will find somebody to replace you. Facts, facts. And just like you said, you know, get with a vet and then just listen to the advice you just gave them. You know, they say a smart man learn from his own mistakes, a wise, a wise man learn from mistakes of others. So just so just yeah. listening to these conversations, then, you know, getting around the vets that been in the league 10 plus years and even five plus years because, you know, the average time in, in professional sports is three years or less. Yeah. So just getting that experience yeah. from, you know, from us and, you know, vets that have been in the league, that stuck in the league for a while, you know, just hearing that and soaking it in and just not make those same mistakes. So, so bro, I, I want the people, you know, to see the human side of it because – you know, we play at the high, we play at the highest level, and we have things thrown at us, and and just like everybody else, we, you know, we go through life. You know, life happens and stuff like that. But with the spotlight on our back, you know, we got a small room for error. Like we can't, we can't make too many mistakes. So we got to grow up quick. So on all the episodes, you know, like I say, the thing, the three things I like to focus on is to entertain, inspire, and inform the people. So what's some adversity that you had to go through? Uh, what's some adversity that you had to overcome up until this point that you can share with the people? Oh man, like just growing up in the environment that I grew up in, man. Mm. I'm about one of the only ones, you know what I'm saying, that hung with me. Only only one that did like the right thing. Right. Like all my people, you know what I'm saying, from family members to homies. Mm-hmm. They, it could have been easy for me to get into that type of game, you know. Facts. But I just stay focused, man, and it's something that I wanted to do in life. Like I wanted to be a professional football player, so right. That's why I, that's why I hung my guns on. Like mm. I wasn't gonna let nobody, you know, what I'm saying, make me do something that I didn't want to do. Facts. Facts. My big thing is like with that <clears throat> when it comes to that, I just dare to be different. Like that. That's the thing I always told myself: just be different. You ain't gotta be like. Your homeboy, because like when we was growing up, they just used to do like little wild stuff, like crackheads. They'll go and beat yep. up crackheads for no reason. Mm. Uh, they'll go and kick, turn off somebody's light because you know in the project you even flip the box up, cut the lights out. Right, right. Like stuff like that, I didn't do. Like I just didn't want to do stuff like that. Like mm. I wanted to be different. I ain't want to be like exactly like none of my homeboy. Facts. And, and, and just listen to what you're saying, bro. It's crazy because I had the same mindset. And with you saying you wanted to be different, basically what you're saying is that you wanted to just be yourself and you wanted to go the route. Right. Like you you had you had this goal that you wanted to, to go out there and, and shoot for and you didn't want, right. you know, all the distractions to, you know, it could be one mistake that can change your whole perspective in life. So, so I was the same way, bro. I had, you know, coming from a small town, 500 people, one gas station. You know, we got Dollar General now, so, we, you know, we coming oh, up in the game. <laughs> <laughs> we coming up in the game. But, nah, just oh, certain yeah. decisions that, you know, the homies and stuff like that was making, you know. I told them, like, nah, I want to do something different in my life. I want to, you know, go to the opposite direction because I, I seen the trend of, okay, if you keep doing this, this is what gonna happen. Like you go end up, oh, yeah. still, you you come back ten years, ten years from now, you go still see the same couple guys at the gas station. You know, you know, chilling, talking about what they used to do back in the day, and you know, living in the glory days and stuff like that. But I said, okay, nah, I want to do something different. Or if you had the outside court, you feel me? They playing against the young guys. You know, talking trash, talking about what they used to do back in the day, and all this and that, living their glory days through the kids and stuff like that. So, so I like, yeah. nah, man, I want to do something different. So that's that's a part of my purpose too. Like come from a small town. You know, showing the kids that, man, whatever you put your mind to and you have a plan and you surround yourself around the right people, you feel me? You can accomplish whatever you want to accomplish in life. And it don't have to necessarily okay. be sports. It's whatever you want to do in life. So, you feel me? So, I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah, I, I strongly agree with you, man. Because yeah. like, like, the thing about me, man, I, 
I, I, I don't make my kids play sports. I ask them, do they want to play? Thanks. Because it, it's not that big. To, it's not that big to me. I'd rather you be smart in school or mm. be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. But if you right. want to pursue football or something like that. You got the blueprint I'm for them. Behind you. I'm behind you 100%. Right. But I don't want you in the streets. Right. I don't want you, you know what I'm saying, stealing. I don't want you doing nothing crazy because Thanks. I got your back no matter what. And for me, it wasn't, you know what I mean, I had people who looked out for me. Right. Like I said, I could easily took the wrong road, but I, I just didn't want to go that way. Mm. That's dope, bro. That's dope. And I hope that <clears throat> the young people that are going to be watching this, man, tell you something for that because that was that was, that was dope right there. So, so bro, we're about to start, you know, wrapping things up. So, what what advice – would you give to a young Josh to file that's going to be watching or listening to this, either when it first uploads a year from now, even five years from now, what advice would you give to a, a young Josh to follow? Oh, man, just work hard, stay focused, man, and mm. do what people tell you to do. Like, <clears throat> my thing is respect is due to a dog. So respect right. everybody, love everybody, even when people don't love you. Yeah, you don't. And I take a thing that The Rock said, um, it was something about being kind. He was like, is 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 it's always nice to be kind to people because you never know, and like you might run into that person, that person might be one one be the one that can help you. Right. So you never you never know what what's going on in life. You never know what a person going through. You might have changed the whole day by just being kind and being nice. But like I say, man, just stay focused, be nice to everybody, respect everybody, and just work hard. That's what I tell a young job to follow, and whatever mm -hmm. somebody tell you to do, some do it. Facts. And then and then on top of that, man, just to piggyback on what you're saying as far as being kind, like as kid, like as young people, like I tell them all the time, like you gotta understand, like you are your brand. Like what you put right. on, like what you put on social media, how you carry yourself like day in and day out. And normally the guys that's at the top of the ranks or whatever that you saying that can help you, it normally be right. somebody that goes to that person and be like, Man, man, nude, man, cool, man, he's a good person, man, he's a good dude, man. I, like every time I'm with him, he always pauses, he always you know, being nice to people and stuff like that. So being kind and building that people want people want the money, but I say that relationship capital is more important than anything. Because if you got people in your corner that if you need like a hand or you need help with someone, you just say if you want to start a foundation, you like you were saying, like getting around those ten year vets to learn from them, getting around somebody that already have has a foundation that you can ask questions to. If you want to start a business, get around people that been in business for 10 plus years you can ask them questions so it's it's right. all, like like i talk about as far as athletes you know like i be trying i be wanting us to understand that it's the same principle it's just a different game and once we understand yeah. that like we already got you know teamwork discipline holy to the count like you were just talking about oh, yeah. like being able to handle adversity like every day is a hell hole like as far as like the workouts you know games and you know uh the leaders the cream rise to the top as far as like you know you know you had them fake leaders that be you know, uh, when things going good, you know, they got their test out. But when things going right. bad, that's when you see the real leaders come out yeah, and, you know, can look a man in the eye and be like, let's go, bro. Like, stop playing, let's yeah, go. Like, got, yeah. yeah, you got some some guys who just going duck and hide. Right, facts, facts. <laughs> and I say, man, you can take all those things from sports, man, for all the athletes out there can apply to whatever <laughs> land you want to go down, you know, outside of sports. You know, but the thing is, like you were saying, as far as, like, you – you tell a little kid, do you want to play football? But, you know, if that's your gift, that's something that you love and you're passionate about, like that for anybody. If it's something that you're passionate about, go for that. Because I said, oh, yeah. man, life too short, man, just to, you know, just to work, just to work. You feel me? So I always say, oh, yeah. you know, you want to work with a purpose behind it. Because if you oh, just yeah. working just to work, man, you go, you go get miserable at one point, man. You're not going to be happy. And, I mean, oh, that's, yeah. the, that's the main thing as far as, like, being fulfilled during your time here on this, on this earth. But, but uh. But you got some? You got some? I'm going to tell you, and always network. Facts. Networking. Yeah. Relationship. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, bro. So that so that's dope, bro. So who would you like to see on um, Locker Room Talk with Coop? Now, before you answer this, whoever you say that you would like to see on her, you got to help me connect connect with that person. So who you like to see on the show? I that that you think would be a good one? 20. 20. 20. Jerry. Everybody, like I say, everybody love 20, man. Yeah, 20, yeah. He's so 20, busy, man. I've been trying to get him on. He he always on the move. Man, he he, he be settled down. He settled down now. He okay. down there in Houston. So I, okay. I can get you linked up with him, man. He, I think he'll be a good one to talk to. Okay, I bet. We're going to make that happen. We're going to make that happen. So so let the people know your social media handle so they can, you know, follow you on your journey and stay in, and stay in contact with you, stay up to date with you. 
I think Facebook, you can find me on Facebook. <laughs> Jaws and Fowler. Jaws yeah. and Fowler Senior. Okay. I think I got, I don't think I don't even know my name on Snapchat. <laughs> I think it's, new, it's Nudie Baby or something like that. Nudie Baby. All right, dope. Yeah. dope. I'm going to have my intern put it up under you while, uh, uh, in the episode. But, uh, but that's another episode of Locker Room Talk with Coop. Make sure you guys like, comment, share this video with somebody y'all think will enjoy it. And also, man, hit those red letters that say subscribe to the channel for you, boy. And new to fam, I appreciate you coming on. You're welcome, bro. Anytime, man. Yes, sir. That's love. That's love.